Welcome back. And it's time for our first hot topic. And indeed, the very hot, only hot topic we'll be having today on the breakfast. Well, the Nigeria Data Protection Bureau has disclosed the signing into law the Data Protection Bill by President Bola Tinubu. And this bill is pro projected to produce 500,000 jobs. And uh, we have been joined by Mr. Oluwashegu Alekba, the MD, Page Me Network and Communication. Hello, Mr. Femi. Oluwashegu Alekba. Mr. Alekba, good morning to you. Good morning. Okay, he's not alone. Mr. Joe Femi Dagonro, Chief Strategist, Westphalia Resources, is also joining us for this conversation. Good morning to you. Hi, right, good morning. All right, so the NDPD, uh, the NDPB, uh, pursuant to this bill that has been signed, um, you know, has transited into a full-fledged commission from being the National Data Protection Bureau. It has now become a full-fledged commission mandated to, among other things, regulate the deployment of technological and organizational measures to embrace personal data protection. Now, this is a lot to chew, especially for people who are not that tech savvy. Uh, so let's start by giving an explanation about what data protection law entails. Let me start with you, Mr. Oluwa Shegu Alegbede. Yeah, I think it has been a long time coming. Uh, it, the effort started with the uh, with NIDA, the Nigeria uh, Information Technology uh, Development Agency. Uh, but uh, what was observed that even though they are married to the to the act, then they are being managed by NIDA. It, it also still adds some. Uh, uh, some uh, some sort of itches. So it, uh, there was need that uh, for data of individuals to be protected, there has to be a commission. Uh, so this are due to be that responsibility, ensuring that uh, while you are giving your information to all of these uh, companies that may you may need their services, you are protected. Your data is not uh, given to unauthorized persons. And in case there is any kind of breach in their system, uh, you can actually hold them responsible. So what it means is that uh, for, for Nigerians and having that information and the, that's uh, understanding that data is huge and people leverage on it to do all sorts of things and all of those. And so it is very important that the rights of individuals are protected. And that is why this signing of the uh, bill into law is very, very uh, a good uh, development for the country in terms of what it also brings to the table uh, for business uh, individuals and people who have confidence to also come into the country to invest in that area. Mr. Daguro, you welcome. You agree with him. It's been a long time coming. Yes, um, no doubt about that. I agree with him on that. And uh, moreover, um, people has been misusing uh, individuals' data. You know, the data you submit. I mean, just to, for a good example, is this: uh, these loan sharks. They give loans to people, and they download all the information on your phone, all the contacts. And if you default one way or the other, you see the people calling everybody on your phone and telling them you are owing, you are this, you are that, and even blackmailing you. So that we stop, you know, because now there is a law to back all these things up. That's just a good example of what's going on. And then another one is this cross-border uh, data transfer. You, you recall that lately, uh, Meta was fined in Europe with about one point something billion. 
And these are the kind of things that people sell your data. Despite the fact that you sign privacy, whatever, on their platforms, they sell your data and you can't protect yourself. So the government has come in to say, look, we are going to protect you more than ever before. Yes, there was a bureau um, before. I mean, that was uh, this same similar act was signed by Buhari in 2022. But then this is more elaborate and it gives you the confidence that now uh, it's going to work a little more better and the people will be there to protect you. You know, in, in Nigeria, definitely, you have so many of these laws, so many of these agencies. I've always been saying it, is the effectiveness, the, the, the practicability, who manages it, who executes so this who, law. Who that manages it now? How does the protection come into play? How does the consumer get protected? I remember during the elections, we saw some videos and listen to some audios which suggested that people's phones were hacked and messages shared what how does the produ uh, the con consumer get protected this time and how does he seek redress <laughs> when he gets violated you know you see the, the problem is now we are going to the government is going to train a lot of people because most people don't even have this knowledge of uh, data protection, how to work with it. So that is why they are coming up with the idea of training the people uh, to manage it, training the people to work with it, because it is not an easy thing to trace any hacker or anyone disrupting your phone. It's not really an easy thing task at all. So professionals are going to be trained, data processors, data managers, and all that, to really, really manage this. The consumers in the, in, in the past, they have been cheated so many times and in so many ways. But look at it. depends on the states as well. The states and the local government, I keep saying, they must participate fully. In Lagos State, for instance, you have this consumer uh, protection agency, you know, and the guy has been working. And you hear his name. He goes to a lot of places to, to, you know, he's on the spot working. And these are the people we need. It is good to sign anything into the, of these bills into law, but we have to be proactive to make it work. Even if we have five million people trained to work on it, they have to do their job well. And this is one thing that I think we have to encourage our leaders to really make sure that if you fail, there must be fines, there must be consequences. You don't just go to the bank and save your data. Look at your NIN is all over the place. Your BVN is all over the place. They keep asking for these things. You don't even know how far this thing has gone, where it has been stored. So now, if we train qualified people and uh, establishments, banks and insurance, wherever that is needed, they, we have to have officers responsible for this data protection. So if there's anything traced to them, they will be responsible. And there will be, there will be consequences. It's not just to say, okay, uh, we, we, we are looking into it. You don't just look into it anymore. You are working on it, and you are making it compulsory for people to really discharge their duty. That is very, very crucial. We have it now. There will be a commission. Quality people should be in that commission. I keep saying it. This is not a, this is, this should be a bipartisan issue. Quality, you know, people working on it. Who knows what it is? It is not just about we find you because you don't like your face or because you don't belong to our party. No, it's because you've done something wrong and the people, the Nigerians, the consumers, we have confidence in you. And that is what these uh, agencies or this commission has to establish. It's not just sitting down in Abuja and sitting and saying, look, we are commissioned. It has to be established in all local governments, in all states, so that you be more active and people will now know, yes, we have somebody watching us. So unless we do that proactively and work on it actively and bring quality people, train quality people to manage it, it will just be like one of those things. But I know with what I'm seeing, without what I'm feeling, um, I believe uh, Bola Ahmed Tinobu as the president is going to make most of these things work well. And that at the end of the day, like I said the last time, uh, we just see that in the next few months, uh, this is not even up to 30 days in office. And this guy is just doing wonderful things and that we are seeing it. We are loving it. And I believe it has to, the momentum has to uh, continue so that we see the effect. Now we are seeing the acts and student loan bill, electricity acts and judicial law officers and all that. Then the effectiveness is what the people are waiting just now. It's, it's good we have that, but we have to be very effective. Okay. I, I would have loved to take you on uh, a lot of things that you have said, but... Uh uh, we are not concentrating on those things today. We're talking about uh, some, some other things. 
Uh, now, my question, let me go to Mr. Elegbede. My question is, uh, for instance, Mr. Dagunro just um, alluded to uh, or used the example of loan sharks and said that uh, they use your data, they do one or two things. Now, if you want to get a loan from a loan shark or you want to download an app, they will ask you whether they can have access to your uh, private information, your, your phone numbers and everything. And if you say yes, you go to the next page. If you say no, you are likely not to get it, maybe the app or anything. So as you, as they're, they're talking about the, uh, the protection, data protection law, will also these people who require this information for you to get their services be engaged as well? Because if that is not done, and one of the requirements to get, let's say, an app is to allow them access to this, your private information is not met. Or if you cannot meet it and you cannot get those things, it means that we will be at the loss. You have something you need to download, but you cannot get, they cannot get that information that will give you the right to download that thing. So we will be at the loss. Will these people be engaged? Will loan sharks, for instance, be engaged? Will app, will app sure. developers be engaged and all that? What is the level of interaction that is going to go on? Yeah, it, it used to be a union thing. Uh, the all commerce affair in the digital economy in Nigeria. Uh, so many of these loan sharks and app developers have done a whole lot of things without putting into consideration the protection of the data they are getting from individuals. So bringing this into perspective now, um, I mean, making it into law means that everybody has to have that consciousness that whatever information you are getting from people, you have to also have a department that will ensure that the data is being protected. And that is the consciousness that will also build confidence in the industry, ensuring that everyone plays by the, by the books. So it, it does not matter if I'm accepting that, yes, you can have access to my information because I opt uh, to get your goods or services online. What, it's, what matters more, more now is that as I divulge or release my data to you, you I'm, I'm also sure that the, the government has a law in place that will protect me. So and if I eventually realize that my data has been transferred into an authorized company or user, then I can take you up. And, and that is where the implementation, execution, and monitoring of the law is very important, as uh, Mr. Dagora has said. It is very important. We have the laws in place in Nigeria, but implementation has always been the issue. Who are going to be the gatekeepers in this case, ensuring that all that is in place in the law are uh, not just in just uh, uh, white and black. They are also uh, giving life, and everybody in the industry ensures that they play by the rules. All right, Dr. Tunje uh, Vincent Olatunji. Uh, is the pioneer commissioner for this uh, Nigeria Data Protection Bureau, which has now transmitted into a full-fledged commission. I asked a question earlier. I'm not satisfied that I've gotten a clear understanding. You just touched on it uh, as Nyango asked his question. How does the consumer get his you know, justice if he finds that he's been violated and also paint for us, paint for us how bad the picture was before this bill was signed into law. How bad was it for the consumers it, and the well, country? Let me, just add, let me just add to what uh, uh, my friend there has said. You know, even if you have to fill all the necessary information or details if you have to give, each company or individuals operating e-commerce or online business or digital uh, businesses, they have to fundamentally as well disclose their private, uh, private uh, privacy policy on their platform. So, but in most cases, they know that most people will not read through these uh, privacy uh, documents or policies because, I mean, they could be about one or two pages. But the point is, you know, it has to be declared. And this is where the, the, the monitors, this is where the enforcers have to go into that, look, if, 
For instance, the bank says, look, our private our policy on privacy is this and that and that. And it's not good enough. Before that, then they will have been controlled. They will have been checked that, look, this is your uh, privacy law or the privacy policy. It's not adequate. Because most people don't even declare it. They don't, you know, point out to it that you can read through this data policy. Every businesses online must declare that, must show that there is, we have a policy whereby they may tell you that, okay, we have three companies. Whatever information you give us as company A, we will go to the, we will submit it or we can give it to the third party. So when it is clearly stated, this is where it is very, uh, a little bit uh, difficult to really, you know, pin them down. They will have written in that privacy policy that uh, your information can be given to third parties. So you can now, you know, tick that. No, I don't want my information to be given to a third party. But the consumers have to always take time to read through, to even understand it before signing. So if it is written there and you don't just mark it or tick it as, okay, I agree with you or I don't agree, because you can check all those things and disagree with some of those things. Once you don't mark it off, as agreed or not agreed, they are free, and that is the that, that is the uh, the loophole, you know, this uh, uh, privacy thing. So it has to be the privacy policy of each company has to be fundamentally, you know, made by the commission. They have to have these fundamentals. Look, these are the basic. You must have it on your platform, whether you like it or not. And once you have it, it is now the duty of the consumer to say, I agree with this, I don't agree with that. Because lately, you see, even before you read newspaper, they are telling you that we gather information to this, to that, and all that. So, but if you don't agree, say, I don't agree. But if you agree, yes, they will sell your information. Because that is the essence, especially most of these uh, uh, platforms that offer free things. They want to sell your information, and that is why they're making it free, because they have to make their money. But when you talk about the fact that uh, they have to put their privacy policy there. The question I asked was that in these things or these people that want this uh, information from you, it's either you agree or you don't. And if you don't agree, you don't get the service and you need it. So where will the government intervene now that they're bringing this law so that you can still get the services but not agree entirely with all that they have said? Is that That's possible? the same thing. If, if you are going to sell your product in our country, Nigeria, you have to agree with this and you have to display this for our consumers to see that. That is why the European Union, they are very hard on all these people. You don't just come because you are Google and you, you are based in Europe and you collect data of everyone and you just send it to American uh, office, the headquarters, and say, look, we're an American company. No, it doesn't work that way. You have to follow the rules of the nation. That is, uh, European Union said, this is what our citizens, we are protecting them, and you must allow them to do this. So Nigeria can do that as well. You know, it's so funny that sometimes you want to buy uh, or you want to renew or you want to do something on Facebook and it's charging you in dollar. You don't go to any other country and charge them a dollar. You are working in Nigeria, you pay in Naira. So these are the things we have to put in place as well. Once you are dealing with us in Nigeria, we pay the currency in, uh, of the country. So you don't just come around and, 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 and tell us what to do. We have our rules, and you have to abide by our rules. If you don't abide by our rules, we'll find you, or we'll tell you to go. Well, these, are, these are simple well, facts. It's not just you have to. And that is why the, the commission have to have this fundamental, basic information that must be there by everyone and anyone doing business in Nigeria. Unfortunately, it's not just this uh, uh, big companies coming from Europe and America and all that that do this. I'm not sure. And if you, for example, example, you yeah, from, uh, what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is that if, even if you have you you you've traveled and you you lodge in a good hotel in Nigeria now, a lot of them yeah. charge you in dollars, not naira. So how do you blame the people who come from? the America itself that it has the dollar. So it is that's our culture that has given it to them. But now... That's what I'm telling you. Yeah. In the past, people who charge rents in dollars. The government of Nigeria say you are in Nigeria, pay in Naira. That's, so they, they, can charge, they can say our Naira value is $50, but you have the right to pay in Nigeria, Naira, and the currency of Nigeria. There's no doubt about that. I can charge you in pounds, but you still have to pay in Naira. Okay. Now, let me go to another question. I know that Maureen... Uh, wants to ask another one. But this data protection, I'd like to know where the balance will be between protecting an individual's data and then the freedom of information. 
Is there a dividing line or is there a, a place of balance that this will have? Because when you're protecting all the information and then we also have a law that gives someone or people freedom to whatever information that they will need about whether an individual or about a corporate organization, where is the balance line? Okay, you want me to go on that? You see, the point is this. Freedom of information does not guarantee you to write nonsense about me, for instance. And if you are not clear, if you want my age, for instance, you ask me. You can send a memo to me or a message to me and say, oh, Mr. Jufemi Dagoro, I want this information from you. If I'm a public officer, I'm entitled to give you this information, but as a private person, I may say, no, I decline. You don't need my information. You don't need to get it. You know, being a public officer and being an individual is quite different. Your freedom of information ends where I have my own rights as well. I have the right to protect myself, to protect my data. So I may decide not to give you some information if they are too sensitive or whichever way I I looked at it, but as uh, government officials, yes, you maybe you have to be asked. You don't just go around and say, "Look, I got it somewhere." If you get the information somewhere and it's not accurate, then you'll be you'll be in trouble. But if you need an information from anyone and you ask and he releases that information to you, then you are free. But don't just go and copy any information about an individual and say, "Look, uh, freedom of information, I got it somewhere." No. Yeah, I mean, it, you are still protected even under that freedom of information. You are protected. Your fundamental human rights guarantees you all these things. And it is just if people don't know. And people are afraid even to take some of these uh, uh, people to some of these organizations up. I think that's the issue. Yeah, taking these organizations up. Mr. Elagbede, come in here. I still don't feel like I've got my <laughs> question answered. <laughs> Some of us are really not that much into tech. Mr. Alekbede, let, let me speak with Mr. Alekbede at this point. Some of us are, are not that much uh, into tech, and so we need some of these informations, uh, information pieces a little bit for us. Talk to us. How do we get redress? I had... This is the third time I'm asking it. If I feel, for instance, that my rights, my data has been used or abused, where do I go to? Is this the commission or I go to court straight? Yes, some of the details of the law are still sketchy because uh, it was just signed. Um, so in the coming days, we'll be seeing more. But the commission has the sole right, uh, I mean, to protect. That's why it was established. So what it means is that if you feel uh, infringed upon, you can actually approach the commission and then make your complaints you know, to them. And from there, they can take it up. And so I think what is also needed here is enough awareness about all of this so that people can know that there is a law that protects them if they feel infringed upon, if their data has been um, disclosed or divulged in a way they feel uh, it affects their persons. Okay, so tech companies in Nigeria would obviously need to do some sort of review or uh, modifications. Am I right? I think it does. Tech companies before that you know had registered before now would probably need to do some sort of review of their definitely, working. Definitely, with this new law, everyone wants to. Like I said, it it used to be all commerce affair. Now with this law, and uh, there's a regulation in place, everybody will need to begin to play by the books and begin to understand what, uh, where they stand as it regards their policy for now, and either to adjust. Hello. Or being in tune with what. Hello. You're, you're okay, Mr. Dagoro, can you, can we hear you? Yes, uh, you see, I just want to add to what he said. You see, to seek redress, the first thing is this. Let me give you a good example because let's make let's give examples that people will understand. Okay, if you give your information, your data to a bank, for instance, and <clears throat> excuse me, and they, you find out that this information is not accurate, or even the electricity guys, you know, and um, first you will approach them. Every company now must have a data protection officer, like I said, mm. to be on the safe side. The person who understands that law, who will be able to respond to you. Because the first thing is, if I offend you, you come to me and say, look, I've offended you. I should be able to say, oh, sorry, let me look at this offense and walk through it. But if I give you seven days to, you know, 
correct that and you didn't, then it is then I will take you up and I will report you because I can't just go to the uh, commission immediately. The commission will be you know uh, inundated with uh, queries and, uh, and and they won't be able to do their job effectively. So it is the right of all organization to have someone that will take care of your data protection, someone that you can write to, and it must be displayed on the platform. The information person must be the name or if not the telephone number or the email address the best possible way to reach out to that person within 24 hours and the person must be able to respond and they should be able to respond within 48 hours otherwise they will be in trouble they know and in some cases you may not even go to the commission you can go to your attorney or to your you know and who will file a case and so they are in for it you know, if we really want to do this, people should just, like the gentleman said, there must be awareness. The thing is this, we are scared sometimes as consumers to take up these organizations. We don't even know what to do. I just leave them, they have money, they can defeat you and all that. No, it shouldn't be. Most of us, especially those ones who can afford it and those ones who have access to all these things, they should be able, if you mess around with my information and I want you to delete whatever you have posted about me and you don't delete it, I'll take you up and it will cost you more than what you think it will be. Even Google and all these big names, just you look at that. They will have it that for this, get in touch with this person and they will get back to you within 48 hours. That is what must happen in Nigeria and that is where we have to follow the international standard. If they don't have it, they have the opportunity now to recruit people and put everything in order. And the government must tell them as well, if you don't put all these things in order, that's why I'm saying the people to man the commission must know what they are doing. That is, if these people don't put their bigger ones, I mean, maybe you talk about these giant e-commerce companies and all that, they must be able to put all these things in place. And if they don't put it in place within a stipulated time, they begin to pay fine. The moment you slam a fine of about 100 million on one company, the rest will sit up. But if you just take it for granted, they take you for granted as well. And that is what is important in this. Mr. Legbede, are we reconnected with you? Can we hear you now? Hello. Hello. Oh, good. All right. Well, we, we talked about how that no. it's, it's, it's been projected uh, to create about 500,000 500, jobs. jobs. Yeah. Tell us how this may come to be. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. It's been projected. You. Yes, it's been projected that this bill uh, would create about five hundred thousand jobs. Let's look at how this may be, you know, come to be. Yeah, this is in addition to what was said earlier. Uh, each of these companies now realize that beyond the department that they have now currently, they need to have a data protection unit, which also means that people will be in, in those units for these companies. So it, what it means is that there are more job opportunities for young men. And then from what has been said uh, when the bill was signed, it also means that um, Nigerians will be trained on data protection and regulations. So it, invariably, it's going to be a means of generating uh, employment opportunities for youths who are data uh, are ready to take opportunities in this direction. So definitely, this is going to be uh, there's going to be a ripple effect in employment, and 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 it's going to also mean that the new government is delivering on their promises uh, during the campaign. So the data protection people that will be trained will now have permanent jobs, or will it be? that they will have uh, uh, some allowances while they are being trained and they are thrown back into the market because we've seen things like this. When the president said that it's going to create uh, 500,000 jobs, are these permanent jobs or they are just jobs that are uh, connected indirectly to these data protection officers? Let's know as specifics, please. You know, you know if, if you are going to train these people, just look at it. It's, it. You see, we have to deviate from this idea of uh, sure P and power and all this kind of stuff because people may not, people may just feel, oh, we've had this before, like you said, after this training, they dump them in the market. But then some of them are even go on to become self employed, to become consultants on their own. And don't forget, these people are not novices as well. Most of them are people already working, most of them are people already, they have ideas about this. 
you cannot compel an organization to give a permanent employment. The government cannot do that. So even if people start as temporary workers, even people we you know begin to say, okay, let me be self-employed so that I can have three or four companies I'm servicing and all that, there will be opportunities. The most important thing is giving the people the opportunities because not every company will employ 10 people, but 500,000, for goodness sake, is not a big deal for a country like this. So now it is the effort the young men and women have to put into this to learn. Uh, giving them stipend or giving them an allowance, it has not been dis disclosed. But, I mean, all this is just too early. But I, I know the, 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 the people want a lot of things come out immediately, but it should be worked out in a better form. I, I, and I believe it's going to be better than the previous ones we've had because most of these things are not that, it's not that the short peer or any other of these programs are not well taught, but it's always the execution. So if people now see the opportunity Opportunities that will be granted. I believe a lot of people will go for it. And some of this data protection uh, training can be given straight from the NYC camps. You know, I don't know how they want to work at it. I don't know whether it's going to be regional, whether it's going to be senatorial, you know, whatever constituency, local government, but whichever way it will be of advantage to young men and women and those who are interested. Because this is not just any kind of job. You have to really understand it uh, as, as uh, something that has to do with the uh, digitalization and with intelligence and with uh, uh, IT. So it's, it's more than just going there to just learn. It's just not only about collision of data and names and addresses. It's more than that. And this will really uh, give us an advantage to have a tech hub in all the states and whereby people will actually say, look, we can train you, you've been good, and you can work, and you can work elsewhere. Don't forget that Nigerians are working in Nigeria today in Lagos, and they're, they're servicing companies in America, in UK, and, and in Canada, and they're earning their money in dollars and pounds sterling as well. So it will be, be not just only for Nigeria. Young men and women will have the opportunity to have jobs, not only you know specifically, whether it's uh, uh, private or government, but I think opportunities will be there beyond even 500,000. But like I said, uh, let's give it some time. It's, it's just too early, but it is not something that cannot be done. It can be done. Okay, one concern that you both have raised is that it all boils down to effective implementation. Let's look at the man at the hems of the affairs, talking about uh, Ms. Dr. Vincent Olatunji, who is the pioneer commissioner uh, for the, the Nigerian Data Protection Bureau. Do you see him as one who can f make sure that this works out well? Do you see him as one who will be effective? You see, personally, I wouldn't want to see that here and judge any individual uh, about how it's going to do, because the thing is this, I don't know what opportunity or what are the laid down principle, what are his conditions of service when he took up this job. You know, and I don't know how, you know, he must have his own ideas. He must have uh, what he wants to achieve. So unless this is the kind of thing that we have to know from him, asking him questions on what are those things, how do you hope to achieve this? And he should be able to lay it down the way he wants to run it, the way he wants to achieve it. This is one thing that people have to find out. Uh, because you can't just say, okay, it's not competent, it's competent. How do you judge someone who has not even, uh, I mean, given the opportunity? But before he's being put there, I think he, he has his own antecedent. I don't know this gentleman. Yeah, he, wa he was appointed in February of last year. That's 2022. And yeah. recently, recently also just uh, got appointed to Forbes Technology Council for 2023. So he's... He's up there. It seems to. Um, sure. Sure. I, I think. That. Yeah, Elok, but they want to come in. Yeah, I think from from what has played out, um, it has been part of the journey so far till this uh, bill was signed into law. So I believe, uh, bearing in mind that he must have been uh, played one role or the other in the uh, passing of the bill. I mean, it it also means he understands the terrain. Um, like uh, it, it was said, he needs to now be uh, talked to and interviewed to begin to see how he plans and then uh, intends to, to make this work. It is a new terrain that I believe anybody at the end of our fear wants to also prove his method. And so, bearing in mind that he was part of the journey so far. And looking at what has been put in place, I believe that there has to be some good show from him. 
Well, thank you, gentlemen. It's, uh, it's so good to and have you. Again, what you have to understand is this. When we're talking about training, you see, it's not going to be an easy thing for some people because you need a laptop. You need equipment. You need the tools. So if you are sending young men and women, we have to be trained. Who gives them these tools? Because a laptop today can cost about 300 or 400,000 or 200 or something thousand naira. Are they going to buy like what your colleague was trying to ask? The tools must be provided for this to be very, very effective. So these are the fundamentals we have to begin to look into. We want to train them. We are going to pro provide tools for them. Train them, give them the tools to work, and let them go into the field and begin to work. You can train them with the laptop, the best computer in, in a hall. And when they go out, they don't have anything to practice. It's a constant thing. They have to be on it 24-7, if possible, to work. And unless we provide the tool, adequate ones, and make these people competent to work. Otherwise, well... But we can make it. Well, we'll, we continue to it. Beam, we'll continue to beam the searchlight on this commission. This is a very interesting conversation. We want to see this work. Well, thank you so much. That's the much we can take right now. Oluwa Shego Elegba, the MD Page Me Network and Communication, and Mr. Joe Femi Dagonro, Chief Strategist, West Australia Resources. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so it's time for us to give you the quote for the day before we wrap up. Yeah, um, it is not how much we have, but how much we enjoy that makes happiness. That's according to Charles Perdion. And we do hope that uh, you've taken that into consideration and you make yourself happy in the best possible way this morning and beyond. And I'd like to uh, also remind you, um, it's been on the internet everywhere, and they're talking about on Sunday being Father's Day. I don't know how many of you will remember <laughs> that, but we remember Mother's Day, we remember Mothering Sunday, we remember everything Mother's. They have like 20, but this is the one time you have. Stop exaggerating, it's not oh, up to 20. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one time you have that opportunity, but seriously to say thank you to someone. It may not be your biological father, but there's always that father figure in your life uh, that you need to say thank you to, or just make them feel nice. If you cannot buy gifts, there's the gift of speech that you can do. So Definitely. happy Father's Day to you all there, fathers of any kind, biological, academic, or anyone. Uh, happy Father's Day in advance. My name is Nyam Gul Agaji. Let's do it again on Monday. And happy Father's Day to every real man out there who's looking out for every child in the environment. Have a good week and goodbye.